Morning, everybody. It is 4th of July weekend. And although we are open 24 hours to our members, there's nobody here at 6.30 in the morning. So I figured it was time to make some videos. Um, so I have a problem. And when you have a problem, you have to find a solution. I have a jade plant that is uh, started as a small little piece of cutling from Home Depot about, I don't know, 13 years ago. And now it's freaking huge and it's fallen out of the pot. And I keep saying to myself, just make yourself a pot, Mel. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to make an oval casserole planter. You can pretty much make any size you want. Um, we're gonna talk about how to make the walls. So here we go. So I'm gonna start with a much larger bat. When you make something without a floor, you have to realize how much taller and how much wider that can be. We always underestimate the effect of how much clay you leave for the floor. So when you have no floor, visualize a large cylinder that's about 10 inches wide. Visualize how much clay is actually taking up the bottom of it. That's probably about a pound and a half, two pounds. So when you eliminate that floor, you're gonna get a lot more height. So we're gonna make a floorless pot right now. Um, so I'm using a much larger a masonite bat. I wanna concentrate on the holes. I'm gonna to wanna to go wider than the holes of your bat. That's super important, especially if you are gonna leave a bottom. This is about five and a half pounds. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and start to center it. You can see plenty of videos on me centering clay, but I start with it a little slower just to get it to stick. And then I'm gonna speed it up so that I can cone up. Palm of my hands towards my right fingers, elbows pushed down against my body. I don't care if the cone is centered or not. That's not what's important. It's all about isolating the small bits of clay. There isn't very much to making um, an oval casserole. What are the hard parts? The hard parts, number one, is gonna be centering five and a half pounds of clay. That's one skill. And then we've gotta actually spread that clay out. So remember, you wanna start with the size of mounds of clay that you need for your pot. So if you're making you know, an eight inch plate, you want that mound of clay to probably be about six pounds. But it's super hard to center clay when it's flat and wide, right? Because when you cone up, you end up with sort of that volcano if it's flat and wide. So even when you're making something flat and wide, you wanna center the clay narrow and high. So you wanna sort of start as if it's a one pound cylinder, but you wanna really, because when you start to cone up, you want it to go up from the middle. You don't want to take those sides. And when you tend to go too flat or horizontal on the top, you end up getting that volcano. Um, I believe that it's because the sides of your pots, the sides of the clay come up and it's very hard to affect what's going on in the middle of that, you know, eight, nine inch um, circle of clay. So you're gonna notice that I'm actually using my entire body, I'm sure my chin and my big nose or in the wind in the screen and I'm using my whole hand so I'm karate chopping with this whole side of my hand and I'm also using this as I push this in so I'm using the palm the meaty part of my hand down my elbows are locked in and I'm just starting to go down I'm using my upper body too if you have any um, elbow issues using your whole upper body will definitely help um, Maybe wear an apron so you don't end up with clay all over your chest. Am I doing that? No. Wearing some of my merch. I know it's backwards, but it says wedge, center, open, pull, destroy, and wedge again. Hashtag clay at it. I do sell all my stuff. I'll do a little extra plug here. We have uh, call it a pot, hashtag clay at it. These shirts here. Okay, you can notice I'm constantly cleaning the side. I don't want any extra sludge, sort of. And I'm never taking my elbow out of my body. I'm just gonna sort of hang out here. Now, sometimes the center um, doesn't get uh, really centered. Maybe it was from coning up and you had that volcano. I do a, little, do a little bit of a cheat. I'll take that out. I'll take my thumb. I'll find the most smallest part to get rid of. I'll dig my thumb underneath and I'll grab that out. And that's usually where the sort of that air bubble is from when you were coning and you had the volcano and you didn't want to let that volcano close, but you let it close anyway. Just get it, take it out. All right, so now I've got the clay centered, narrow and tall. 
Now I need to compress it down to make it come out. This is very difficult. Um, that's why plates are some of the hardest things you can make. No one ever believes me. Um, I know every time you put the clay on the wheel, the wheel thinks it's gonna make a plate, but it'll always make the plate accidentally wrong. So the trick to this is, again, pushing down in the center. As you start to push down in the center, the clay needs to start to ooze out. This hand is gonna catch it and keep it under control. Sometimes you can use um, this whole part of your hand too, but basically what I'm doing is I'm pushing down in the center, and as I start to push down in the center, you'll see sometimes you'll end up with sort of this, this donut, this mushroom. We don't want that. So these fingers are sitting on the side and they're pushing, pushing this clay down into that hole. We don't want this. So I'm pushing with my left palm to sort of fill that in. You see how I used the sides of my fingers and I filled that in. Now I'm gonna go down even more. until very often now you'll see we'll pop some air bubbles along the way um i try not to put a pin tool in them i probably will end up doing it um but i often just see if maybe they'll just pop on their own this one not so much air bubbles are not the end of the world guys air bubbles just make things hard to center and hard to throw but they really, they don't make your pots explode. The moisture trapped inside your pot is what makes it explode. So as long as your pot is super dry, that air bubble is not it. The air bubble makes it a real hell of a thing to center and to um, throw with. You just gotta sort of fake it and ignore it. So you notice I'm using my entire hand. The clay is starting to ooze out and my left hand and body are just controlling it. Now, how wide am I gonna go? Well, remember all of this clay here in the center is gonna be part of my walls. So visualize that if your clay is, when you open this, your clay is this thick, you're gonna double up or triple up. So one side of that wall is a quarter of an inch. That's probably about an inch. You're gonna get three times the height. I know that's hard to sort of visualize, but as you do more and more, you'll notice what you're aiming for. But I am actually looking for something with a super high wall because you've, you've really got to see the size of this uh, this jade. It's enormous. When I was a kid, I used to go to a Chinese restaurant in the Bronx, and I used to be enamored by this giant tree. And I realize now that it was like a five-foot jade. So, but their stems become literally like tree branches. And the weight of them, because they're succulents, the weight actually literally leans it and then it spreads itself so it can only be up against your window in the sun so you got to catch it before it really <laughs> trains itself so obviously i didn't catch it so you're going to notice that i'm just keep on compressing back sorry a little tangent on jades there and i want you guys to see see this thumb right here this thumb is pushing that clay in just making sure that it's staying centered. Now I'm gonna go a little bit lower before I decide to open up. I'm using this whole hand here to sort of keep this round. Notice it's still like a very short flat disc. It doesn't have that space under here. And for this purpose, we don't want it. We're making a cylinder, so we don't want space. This is gonna be the end and the bottom of our floor. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna assume that I wanna take all this clay and I wanna build this up. So I'm gonna push down in the center again, give it one last sort of drive into the middle there, make it a little thinner. You know, I've been saying for years I was going to get a setup for the top. I promise. This is the video that really makes me do it. I'm kind of compressing as I go back. Catching it with my left thumb is over here. Holding on to it. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to open up the floor of this. So I'm going to take my sponge. I don't want to just make a hole. One hole is not big enough. 
I want to do multiple. So I'm going to make a really wide sort of three to four inch, I'm sorry, three to four finger hole right in the center. Again, I'm locking those elbows into my knees. I am literally pushing down. If you don't push down, you're going to loosen up and the clay is going to take you wherever you want. And this is probably one of the most important times to make sure that you're opening right in the center. Now, if I take my nail, I'm going to show you guys this in a second. I show you that I am making a bottomless pot. Okay, let's see if we can. All right, so I'm going to go in here. Eh, maybe if the top would have been better, but it's still a little better. Notice this little lip here. I want to compress that down. I don't want that to get out of control. Chances are it may come off, which I knew it was gonna do, because it didn't really have time to set into the clay. Now, if I don't go straight back to get a complete dark center here, it's okay. I don't really care. So now I have my whole hand on the outside. I'm gonna use this hand too, and I'm just gonna go ahead full speed, open up this pot. Notice that little lip is happening. I'm gonna compress that down my whole hand. So I'm sort of easing the clay out. I don't want to make any sudden moves, but my outside hand is controlling it. So it's the same as when I open a cylinder and I do this, I'm literally pulling the entire clay out, compressing it back in. I'm using a, I think it's 240 No G. It's a little softer. It's making it so that I'm not really sweating as I do this, although it is, it is involving a little bit of sweat. I just wanna make sure, I don't really care again about if the bottom is completely clean. I mean, I can clean it up if I want to, maybe for the visual it might be best. Um, I just wanna make sure that I'm not unevenly pulling any less or any more clay in one spot. Now I don't want to lose, I don't want to lose this right angle. So you want to make sure that I'm still maintaining that. You can correct it every once in a while by just holding your hand still. As you get bigger with clay, it's a lot easier to correct small little, uh, little errors. I know that sounds like not tr like why how would that be but it is it's just a lot easier to go ahead and center uh recenter large clay all right i'm gonna quickly get rid of this just so you could see just using sort of the plate rib to get rid of that just so you can kind of see what i'm sort of aiming for Okay, so now comes the pulling of the walls. So you wanna make sure that you do what I just did. Ooh, is that on? Oh, that's not on, that would have sucked. And I've actually gone past the holes, so I don't have to worry about the holes in my bat. So now what I'm gonna do is you can see it real close right here. I'm gonna to start to pull my walls, but I wanna make sure that I don't lose this right angle. And I also wanna make sure that the inside has a little bit of a slope that's gonna help me attach it. So I'm gonna start down on the bottom, a little less pressure on my top. And again, I wanna aim for sort of a mini volcano. The real important part about this is that my walls go straight up and down, especially when I'm shaping it. If you were just gonna make something that was gonna stay round, I'd say go ahead and it's okay for you to not have the walls go straight up and down. When you're making something oval, it's hard to kind of get walls that do this to, to shape well. Um, try it out, you'll see. I can't really explain why. Now, I'm making a planter. I don't need these walls to be super thin. Again, it's holding a giant tree in it. To be honest, this may not even be big enough once the 10, 12% of the clay shrinks. Notice I compress the lip every time. 
start down here again. Now I want to give myself a little bit of a rib, a ridge on the top. Um, several reasons. I just feel it sort of holds the pot a little better, um, holds its shape a little better. I just visually like it. You'll see on all of my bowls work, all of my bowl uh, videos. So again, this was about five and a half pounds. Um, there's my little ridgy lip thing. It has no bottom. So it looks like it would be even bigger, but remember it's probably about one or two pounds that would have been um, allocated for the face, the base, if I would have put a floor on there. We'll go ahead and show you this real quick. So you see how I have that little bit of a slope here? That's going to give me the clay to have it stick to the floor. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of as much as I can here, going straight up and down. I go straight down. So I can't get my pin tool in here. I can do one of two things. I can just say whatever, I'll get rid of it later. Or I can take my splash pan back a little, get my tool underneath here, slide it under, cut it. If this ever sticks, you could always take this away later. It's gonna dry a lot faster than the actual pot because it's such a thin piece. So if you're afraid to take this off, you don't have to take it off now. Okay, there we go. There we have the beginning of my, uh, my giant jade tree succulent pot. Um, again, I'm not really sure if this is gonna be tall enough. I'll put the measurements down in the comment. Hang out and I'll make the bottom. Okay guys, it looks as though we're ready to assemble our oval pot or planter, casserole dish, whatever you wanna call it. Um, I rolled this slab the same time that I made the cylinder. Here's my bottomless cylinder. Um, and I let it set up on a wooden table. Um, most important part about slabs is that you don't wanna just play around with it a lot. You wanna roll that slab, you wanna gently place it down and you wanna call it. You don't wanna move it. You don't wanna stretch or put some air between those clay grains. You can even go ahead and compress it if you want. Maybe your slab roller has a little bit of canvas and you don't want that mark. So I'll take a hard wooden rib like this and just sort of smooth that out. Am I thinning it out? No, you wanna try really hard not to lose the thickness of your slab, especially for your base of something that's gonna hold something heavy. Um, this is about a quarter of an inch thick. We have a line on our slab roller that tells everyone you can't go any thinner or thicker. Here's my, um, my cylinder that I threw yesterday. I left it unwrapped um, for quite a few hours and then I came back and I wrapped it really tightly. I want my cylinder to be flexible, but not where when I touch it, I get fingerprints. I wanna make it so that if I move it quite a bit, the whole thing moves with it, not just sort of this little part of it. The most important part about this, or one of the most important parts, is how you wire it. I've already wired mine, but I wanna talk really quick about how I did it. When you're coming through with the wire tool, you want your thumbs as close as possible. Go ahead and get this into a slightly better position for you as I gently move my slab over, keeping it flat. So when you're pulling your thumbs through, you wanna have your thumbs as close together as they possibly can without ruining the size of your pot. And as you start, you're gonna pull those thumbs out. And when you get to here, you're gonna to start to close those thumbs back up. One of the most important parts is you're gonna have a little bit of tension in the beginning. All of a sudden, it's gonna be like a free-for-all because you're not gonna have the floor. So you just gotta be very mindful of that. I'll go ahead and wire this again. Oh, maybe I won't. Okay, never mind. I just moved it. <laughs> All right, guys. So now what I want to do is I want to decide what shape I want this to be. Now, I'm going to commit to that shape and I'm going to call it. I'm not going to touch it anymore. Just going to leave it. So I'm going to lift it up by two sides very gently. Dry hands. Always dry hands. 
Maybe you have another person who can be with you and to hold down the bat. And I'm going to go ahead and shape it. Into what I'm aiming it to be. I'm going to pull it on both sides so that I'm getting even pull. Okay. And once I sort of have this um, oval shape that I'm aiming for, I want to make sure that my walls are not too flexible. Now, what I want to do at this point is leave it. I don't want to touch it. I want to make sure that my base is touching. Okay, it's still a little flexible, so I just want to sort of hang out there. Now, right now, the most important part is that my slab and my cylinder are of the same dryness. And now I want them to dry together. So I'm going to go ahead and just let this sit for another hour or so, depending on the weather of where you are. Okay, so I basically allowed the cylinder to become leather hard and the slab to be leather hard. And they're sort of taking the journey together. Now I'm able to pick this up without it moving and then reapply it. So what I wanna do is first, I wanna gently trace around the outside of my cylinder. Now, I'm not gonna cut it yet. Okay. And now that I can move this without it really changing shape, I'm just gonna pick that up with two hands, move it to the side gently. I'm gonna score the base. I'm not as concerned about scoring the, the top. I know it's a little bit of a cheating, but just the hassle of flipping that over to me seems like way too much work. So I'm gonna shortcut a little and only score the bottom. I'm a big fan of this um, Sin Claw. It's a, a scoring tool. Um, I've been through several, because I lend them out. I'm basically just gonna go around the inside of that circle. Just kind of gouging it up real good. Cross hatch a little bit on the edges. Now I've kept the inside sloped of my cylinder. And I've done that so that I have this good three quarters of an inch to an inch worth of area to really apply the slip to. So I have a real good uh, sort of connector. Go ahead and add some slip. I don't want to add a lot. Um, we don't, we're in the process of trying to get this to start drying. And when you start to add a lot of slip, you're sort of reversing the process and uh, not really doing much. Just want to sort of go back in. I'll go back in in some areas and really sort of gouge it up a little, maybe create a little bit of slip with the existing clay. This thing is really sharp, by the way. Um, I tend to not close it. I think it's a little hard to close. Uh, it reminds me of Wolverine. So I think it's a little hard to close, but these are really sharp. So you wanna make sure you always know where it is. So now we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna gently pick this up. I'm gonna try and line it up. You really only have one chance to get this right. Um, slip does serve a purpose. And if you place it down in the wrong spot, you're probably gonna pull off in one spot more than the other. And it's just not gonna be a, a very easy transition to try and recenter it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just gonna tap the top of this. Sort of do a little bit of a wiggle. And it's dry enough where I'm not affecting the shape by doing that wiggle. If you've got a lot of slip, you'll see it sort of ooze out the sides and that's okay. Okay, so what I've done is on the inside, I've left that sort of slope. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what the inside looks like so you can see how I'm gonna use that slope of clay to really seal this on. Okay, so you can kind of see this little slope here is gonna act as sort of my, um, my connector. I'm gonna use that to sort of seal in um, the space between the inside, a little Dave Matthews reference for you, uh, the space between the wall and the floor of the pot. 
Now your wall is dry enough, so you shouldn't really be messing up the shape. I'm just kind of going in there and sort of um, smoothing it out, really sort of creating that seal. Now that does not necessarily mean that it's sealed on the outside underneath here, but we've kind of started this. By sort of tapping it down, we hopefully got rid of a decent amount of air. And now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna score the inside of this. And then I'm gonna make a coil and I'm going to almost use it as caulking on the inside to really sort of secure that. Using the claw again, sort of get in there and sort of, so if you want a real right angle on the inside, um, that's gonna be a little harder. I start for your first one, you should have it slope in like this. That right angle is going to give it less space on the wall to really secure it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab this sort of soft clay here and I'm going to start to make a coil. Now this coil doesn't have to fit all the way around. Um, the coil can be done in pieces and you're not going to need as wide of a coil. I'm just going to slide this over as you think as long of a coil as you think you need. Um, it's gonna, as you start to squish it, it gets longer and longer. So you're not gonna need as much. Trick to a coil is you wanna have that palm of your hand go all the way to your fingertips as you're rolling. You wanna get a full 360 degrees with the coil rolling completely around. And we don't want this super thick because we're gonna be filling in the corner with it. And we don't wanna sort of put too much of a slope on the inside. I'm a little out of camera there, but you guys get the point. Doesn't have to be a full piece. Take that off. So you can see that we're aiming for about, it's a little less than a quarter of an inch. Now we're gonna go ahead and put some slip on the inside here. Again, we don't need a lot. We don't want it too super soupy. I'm a big fan of slip being like um, a granimal, uh, not a granimal, a uh, danimal. Danimal, the yogurt, the liquid yogurt, like not too thin. You don't want some Greek yogurt. It's also going to score our coil, but we want it to be thick enough, not too watery. I guess everyone has different ideas of what they want. So I'm going to start on one edge and I'm gonna to start to squish that in. And as I start to squish in, this coil is getting longer because I'm really only using half of the thickness. Just going back and reinforcing it a little. Oops, broke a little there. Like this would be when I need that little overhead camera, don't I? TikTok just always keeps trying to sell them to me. I just always forget I need it until I'm right here trying to do a video with you guys from the top. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and keep going around until I've got a nice even seal all the way around. Okay, so you can see how in here I have a nice even sort of caulking around the edges. Just sort of squishing it in there. I want all those little clay grains and granules to get in there. Now, again, this is a planter, so you're probably never gonna see the inside of this ever again, but you still want it to be a nice even seal so that when you fire it, hopefully it doesn't crack where you connected the two pieces. Okay, so I guess right now you're going, when are you gonna cut the edge off? Well, I like to wait until I know it's really sealed on there. I let it dry a little. I'm just going to go ahead on the outside and just sort of squish that in a little bit. I also don't like to cut right to the edge immediately. So I'm going to go ahead and take this knife. 
Um, I know that a lot of companies sell these, but if you go to Stop and Shop, you could buy a package of three of these um, in the houseware aisle for about $3. Um, or you can buy the more expensive ones. So you can notice I'm not cutting right to the edge. I just want to get rid of a lot of the excess. The minute you make the wrong cut, um, <laughs> that's the minute you sort of mess up all the work that you've just done. So our goal is really to, um, to my phone is ringing and we're closed on July 4th. Uh, the goal is to really get a straight edge. And sometimes when we cut, we tend to cut at an angle so that it ends up looking like this. You'll see this is the piece. So you see how it goes in and we really wanna go straight up and down. So we wanna really care about that cut. Okay, so now about now is when I'm gonna really care about that cut. I wanna first sort of move this a little, just to a slightly drier part of my table. You'll see my walls are still a little flimsy. So I, wanna, I don't wanna do too much to it. And this is pretty much your last chance to really make it the shape that you want. Hopefully it doesn't go back to what um, it was before. Okay, so I wanna always be cutting on my right side because I'm a righty and I always wanna to cut towards me. And I wanna go straight up and down. So I wanna line that blade up with the side of my pot and I wanna make sure that that blade is perpendicular to the table. Again, do it in pieces. You don't have to rush this part. See, just like that to make sure you're getting a nice straight edge. What I'll do is I'll even go ahead and turn it a little bit more so that I'm always cutting towards me. My tool is straight up and down, leaning up against the side of my cylinder. And as you can see right there, I did exactly what I told you not to do. You wanna make sure that you don't cut the cylinder too. I'm gonna to have to go back and cut a little bit more. Smooth that out as I go. Go ahead and seal that in. Have your hand on the inside and the outside. Now I'm gonna turn it again. Cut towards me. Remember, try not to cut the actual cylinder. You just wanna cut the floor. Knife perpendicular to the table and cut it off. And if you're a little short, it's okay. You could smooth that in and then later go back in with the rasp to sort of really straighten that out or shore form or whatever those things are called. I think it's a rasp, but now we're gonna go straight again, perpendicular to the table. Cut that piece off. That's the expression. I, I tend to do everything a little too fast. Um, this is the one time I really do encourage you to go and take your time doing this. And then that final piece, and I should have turned it and I didn't turn it, so guess what I did? I went again. I love when I actually tell you to do things and then I don't, and then I mess it up exactly why I told you to do it that way. So I did, I went at a little bit of an angle. I'm gonna go back and try and fix it. Again, I should have taken the time to turn it so that I was cutting towards me. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead with my finger and just go around real quick, make sure it's sorta, of, hopefully there's no air trapped between the floor of the cylinder and the slab. But I, I think we got a real good seal in here. Now, your strong desire is gonna be, let me move this immediately. Um, I don't want you to do that. I want you to just let it set up. I would even cover it with a piece of plastic gently and let it dry slowly. So although your top and your bottom were similar dryness, um, you still want them to travel together. Uh, one day you'll hear my analogy. All of our pots are always trying to get to Arizona, the driest pot possible. You want all the elements to carpool together to get to the driest spot possible. So if you need to slow one down a little, plastic is the way to go. So um, there you go. Hopefully at the end of this video, you'll see my final project. 
If you were to make this into a casserole, go ahead and think about different handles. Aesthetics on that is a whole nother world. Um, but here you go. Here is the oval casserole.